On April the 12th, 1912, the Titanic was crossing the Atlantic on her way to New York on her maiden voyage. All seemed to be going well, and a group of eight men were gathered in the first-class smoking room to discuss the meaning of life. One of the group was William T. Steed, the English journalist and spiritualist. As the evening progressed, Steed began to tell a ghost story, which would open up the floodgates to legends and myths surrounding the Titanic and her sinking for decades to follow. He boasted that he was not superstitious, yet the story concerned the finding of an Egyptian mummy and the translations of an inscription on the mummy's case, which warned whoever should read the inscription aloud would meet a violent death. The seven other members listened with curiosity, wondering whether Steve could have been telling the truth and whether this mummy case was aboard the Titanic. Seven out of eight of these men would go down with the ship, including Steed himself, although he apparently had already had a premonition about his own death sometime before. The only surviving member was Fred Seward, who later, when asked to recite the story, refused to tell it. The case in question contained the remains of the Princess of Amun-Ra, who lived 1,500 years before Christ. When she died, she was laid to rest in an ornate coffin and buried deep in a vault at Luxor. Now, in the late 1890s, four rich young Englishmen came to Luxor and were invited to buy the very same coffin. So, they drew lots, and the man who won paid several thousand pounds and had the coffin taken to his hotel. But a few hours later, he was seen walking out into the desert and never returned. The next day, one of the three remaining men was shot by an Egyptian servant. By accident, apparently. His arm being so severely wounded, he had to have it amputated. Meanwhile, the third man on his return home found out that his bank had collapsed, meaning he'd lost his entire life savings. The fourth man suffered a severe illness, lost his job, and finally was reduced to selling matches on the street. Nevertheless, the coffin eventually reached England, and apparently caused other misfortunes along the way back, where a London businessman bought it. After three of his family members had been injured in a road accident, and then his house was damaged by a fire, he decided to donate it to the British Museum, where it still is today, fascinatingly enough. Now, as the coffin was being unloaded from the truck in the museum courtyard, apparently the truck suddenly went into reverse and trapped a passerby. Then, as two workmen were trying to lift the casket up the stairs, one fell and broke his leg, and the, the other, who was apparently always completely healthy, died unaccountably two days later. Once the princess was installed in the Egyptian room, trouble really started. The museum's night watchman frequently heard frantic hammering and sobbing from the coffin. Other exhibits in the room were often hurled about at night. One watchman actually died on duty. Of course, watchmen started to want to quit, and cleaners refused to go near the princess as well. And one little visitor, one little bastard, child decided to throw uh, a tissue or a dust cloth onto the painted face of the coffin, because he's a child, I guess, and um, ended up getting measles soon afterwards and dying. So, the authorities had the mummy carried down to the basement, figuring it couldn't do any harm down there. But within a week, one of the helpers was seriously ill, and the supervisor of the move was found dead on the desk. By now, the papers ended up hearing about it, and a journalist photographer took a picture of the mummy case. And when he developed it, the painting of the coffin was of a horrifying human face. The photographer was said to have gone home then, locked his bedroom door, and shot himself. Soon afterwards, the museum sold the museum to a private collector. After continual misfortune and deaths, the owner banished it to the attic. A well-known authority on the occult, Madame Helenia Blatavatsky, ooh, a nice name, upon entering the premises, she was suddenly seized with a shivering fit and searched the house for the source of the evil she was feeling, and, of course, she came to the mummy case. Can you exorcise the evil spirit? asked the owner. There is no such thing as exorcism. Evil remains evil forever. Nothing can be done about it. I implore you to get rid of this evil as soon as possible, she replied. But the, no, the British Museum wouldn't take back the mummy. The fact that almost 20 people have met with misfortune, disaster or death from handling the casket in barely 10 years was also now very well known. Eventually, a hard-headed American archaeologist who dismissed the happenings as quirks of circumstance pays a handsome price for the mummy and arranged for its removal to New York. In April 1912, the new owner escorted his treasure aboard a sparkling new white star liner about to make its maiden voyage to New York. On the night of April 14, amid scenes of unprecedented horror, the Princess of Amun-Ra accompanied 1,500 passengers to their deaths. At the bottom of the Antic, the name of the ship was, yep, 
you guessed it, the RMS Titanic. But this is where the story gets convoluted. Basically, we actually know it's in the British Museum. In matter of fact, it's actually displayed in room 62 if you're interested. Also what's on display, the museum claims, has nothing to do with the story about the Titanic. Actually, as a matter of fact, it's not actually a coffin lid that's even displayed at the British Museum. Rather, it's actually a statue of a priestess of Amun-Ra. Interesting though, this exhibit has definitively been linked to a death of that of the British writer and journalist Bertram Fletcher Robinson, who basically became obsessed in 1904. He, wrote, he worked for the uh, Daily Express. He became obsessed with the idea that this mummy was the very evil one that helped sink the Titanic, and eventually um, he did lots of research into it and died three years later after he started the research at the age of 36. So basically, it is a really creepy story. Either way, whichever way you look at it, there's evidence either way to suggest that it is, there's something quite sinister about it. So if you love your creepy stuff, and I suppose you do because you're listening to this story in the first place, then why not visit London and go to the British Museum? I mean, it's a nice trip out anyway. London's great. Um, and there's all sorts of creepy things in the British Museum. I might start a series on this. Yeah, so there you go. There you have it. I mean, which story do you believe? Do you believe the Titanic story, that it was aboard the Titanic and somehow got saved? Not that that would make any sense, though. There is, um, there is like, a, a sub-story that it was um, some a rich businessman bribed uh, some, one of the guards to, to put it on a lifeboat, and it ended up getting to New York and then was shipped back to London. That's one of the stories. Um, but you can do your own research on this, and there's all sorts of things on the internet, all these conspiracy theories, as always. There's all these conspiracy theories of people suggesting that actually it's wicked and it's evil, and, and the British Museum's doing sinister things to cover it up. Um, but again, that's, that's if you're interested to learn some more. But there you have it. Thank you so much for listening, and good night!